All right, guys, if you've seen the last video, Cruiser Shaker platform, I've got the morning sun hitting and it's got a shine to it. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook or follow Dixieland Bow Hunter page on Facebook, you know I'm, I plan on doing a painting video this morning. Uh, if you don't follow me on Dixieland Bow Hunter on Facebook, if you would, go on and check that page out and give it a follow and you'll be able to keep up to date with what we're planning on the next videos being. But this morning I'm going to be painting the Cruiser Seeker platform and a set of muddy pro sticks and uh actually goes that way this zip light zip not zip tie zip lock bag the ropes and i have some am steel aiders from custom am steel that i'm gonna i've already put on there i'm gonna keep them bagged up while i paint them but anyway if you don't follow dixie land bow hunter page on facebook just send me a friend request at bow Hunter KY. That's all the last words, all Hunter KY. H U N T E R K Y. First name Bo. Real name's Kevin Cannon, but uh, I'm easy to find on Facebook that way. Send me a friend request so we can message each other. If you got any questions, just hit me up. This morning we're going to start off with a brand new seeker platform. I mean, it's fresh from the factory, hot off the press, whatever you want to say. But the first thing I'm going to do is give it a good degreasing. And uh, what I like to use for this, which is why I'm wearing the gloves, I don't want any of my skin's oil on there because it just, especially on bare aluminum, you need you need everything you can to make it stick well. This does have a nice, uh, kind of a rough finish to it. I think it, it's gonna prime really well. But what I start off with, what I like to use is just brake cleaner. Uh, brake cleaner, carb cleaner, just about any of that that evaporates quick. It breaks down oil. And then it evaporates quick, so I'm going to go and spray this platform. And while this is drying off, I'm going to go and put my base coat on the uh, the sticks here, the, the gray primer. I'm going to prime it gray first. So let's get started. Probably should wear goggles for this. <laughs> All right. Now I will say this, I'm using a gray self etching primer. On these sticks, they already have a nice coat, but if you were painting bare aluminum, a self etching primer will help it bond to it uh, better than just a plain gray flat primer. So if you're wondering where you get this, I was curious this last time I was trying to find it. I could, it wasn't in the paint section at Walmart and the hardware stores around here and the little, you know, just the uh, auto parts store and stuff. I couldn't find, couldn't find what I was looking for in the self etching. But if you go to Walmart, it's not gonna be with the spray paint. You gotta go back to the automotive area, at least at my Walmart is where it was at. So I looked it up on, on their website. They said they had five available. I went in and looked at paint. No, couldn't find it. Just had to go back and get some automotive supplies, looked up. There it was. It's Rust-Oleum Self Etching Primer. It looks just like this. It's gonna paint this bare aluminum platform much better. If I had just some uh, regular primer, that's probably what I would use just on the sticks, but this would be fine too. As you can see, I got one coat of the Self Etching Primer already on the sticks. Now let's do the platform. Well, I got everything coated really good. Uh, the platform's coated. I'll probably go back, being it had no paint base to it, and put another on it. Uh, the Muddy Pro sticks, I already had paint on them, so I'm gonna let those dry. It's kind of cool this morning, probably gonna take 30, 40 minutes. I'll come back and put another coat on that platform and I'll get to paint those sticks, so hang in there. I mean, the way I do it, uh, similar to what a lot of other people do, but I think I put a little more thought into it. Sometimes you, you watch some of these videos and you just see them, you know, they take their sponges or they take their striping, but how they do it's fine. I mean, deer probably don't care. Uh, just to the human eye, when you think about tree bark, everything's in a vertical pattern. So 
that's what I try to replicate. A lot of times, like, I'm going to come back and stripe it with black. I don't just zebra stripe it on horizontal lines. I try to put those on 45s because if you look at the, the shadows in the woods, most of the time they're off of limbs. Limbs is usually on an angle, so that's pretty much what the black that you're putting in it is simulating is the shadows. So I'm going to paint those. I always paint mine on like a 45 or 30 degree angle. And even on those small sticks, just try to stripe it in a way that's down like it, come across the steps at an angle. And then when you come in there with your sponge, you know, cut you an edge, you want to dip it where you're making elongated, long little dabs, thin, when you, I guess what, I don't know how to say that. If you cut your sponge to a point where you're just making narrow, oblong or rectangle, long, short, long and skinny, that's what I'm trying to say dabs at it you don't want to turn them horizontal because then i mean when you walk in the woods and you're walking around the woods and some guy's got a ladder stand what's the first thing that jumps out at you it's those steps you see those horizontal lines they catch your eye and i, I don't know if it catches a deer eye but it catches my eye and a lot of times these ain't going to be left in the woods but uh you're trying to fool the human eye because we don't know what a deer really sees like or i don't anyway so I try to always put all of mine on that vertical pattern. That way when you put it on the tree bark, it looks closer to it instead of being a cross grain look to it. So anyway, uh, if you do this, try to do that and you'll see a difference in it from your paint jobs and just blobbing round circles all over. Try to make elongated marks with the sponge in a vertical pattern. It'll help blend into the bark much better. All right, guys, everything is nice and dry. Good coats on both of them on the primer. Uh, you can see I already hit some black, be sure my paint was working all right. But here's the flat black. Hold on, I got a tractor going by the house. All right, gonna start off with this flat black. Now this is gonna be simulating uh, shadows that would be cast by limbs. Or at least that's what I think anyway. I mean, I ain't no expert, but I'm not trying to be Bob Ross and make happy little trees. But I am trying to hide this stuff. So flat black, a good paint. Now I'm going to go through here and I'm going to try to stripe everything kind of on an angle. I know sticks, it's just going to look blotchy. Uh, but the platform, as you can tell, it already has some nice angles on it. And really the bottom is what's really going to matter here. Because when you look up the tree, the deer looks up at the tree, all he's going to see is the bottom. You know, the rest of it's just for us. We, we like to say, oh, look at the paint job. But anyway, here it goes. I'm on, I like to stack my sticks together. That way I kind of got a repeatable pattern on it. So I'm going to start right here and go up. What you need to do then i try to come in here and hit the sides in those spots to carry that shadow over maybe throw some on the standoffs and come around the other side of it carry those on over Just wherever you feel like it needs something. Just You're just trying to break up the form of these sticks by casting shadows on it. As you can tell that's gonna be my base for my sponging right there. I believe that looks pretty good. It's kind of a good mix. I mean, literally you could probably hunt just with them flat gray, but this is gonna add a little more depth to it. Make it blend into the tree bark, just that much more. Now on the platform, you see I already got these 45s. I'm gonna try to get it up in there like that. On the top side, on the bottom side, just trying to hold these angles up. Trying to see if I got it on. Just try to keep it all together. 
pretty good. Stand off the same thing. I'm gonna bring this. All right. You see the bottom of it. Now the sticks, I'm not worried about actually going against the bottom side of it. I'm not gonna even paint those. But now, I think I can turn this over with this angled edge. It holds it up off there nice, so I'll be able to go on and do this side. And you can see, I'm just following the marks that's already there, pretty much. All right, that's basically it with the flat black. We'll give that a few minutes and we'll come back, we'll start the sponge painting. All right, my next coat is the light tan. Uh, you've already got the gray. I know it kind of looks green here. I have to keep moving it to the shade because if I put it out in the bright sun, which is gonna be there in a second, I'm casting shadow on the video. But I like to use this tan. I'm gonna give it a pretty good dabbing of this with I got a piece of natural sponge uh, oh ice cream container top I'm gonna spray it in there and you have to move fairly quick with your paint because it does dry up on this pretty quick but remember we're going for a vertical pattern it's probably not the platform probably not as critical but on these sticks we're wanting to stick with a vertical pattern so I'm gonna turn this like this or like that whatever gives me the best design and I'm gonna run it this way I ain't gonna put them this way because that gives you a cross grain on the tree bark and I'm I'm trying to just follow that grain all the way up same thing with the platform instead of these 45s I'm just gonna be dabbing it and I'm gonna put a pretty good coat of this on here I'm gonna put a lot of this tan I like this tan it blends in really well so I'm gonna get started on that all right let's see what we got see I like I, it looks pretty good so we're gonna go with that. You see what I mean? It's already drying up. As you can tell here, I pretty much got the platform coated with the slight tan. Try to flip it over. And because I, it ain't as crucial on the vertical pattern on this, I wanted a better coverage just to kind of, I used a big square. Use that right there. But on these sticks, I'm gonna use this little small edge because it's a little narrow thing. That way I can lay out a checkered tree bark look to it as I go up through there. So. I'll show you how to do that. Take the small edge. You might have to trim your sponge to get a thin edge on it. And I just want to keep this straight up and down with the stick. I'm probably gonna have to separate some of this out so I can get to the sides better. But just to show you, I'm trying to get that, if I turn it this way, it's gonna be, it's gonna stand out. So I'm gonna try to do them all on a vertical pattern that way it simulates the tree bark. All 
All right, guys, as you can see, I'm getting a little shadows on here. Let's zoom it out a little bit. This is what it looks like. I dabbed it pretty heavy in the tan. I like to get a pretty good coat of tan on there. And I've done all of them that way. As you can see there, I don't know if I can zoom it in. Kind of get a better look at it. And that's kind of how it looks right now. I'll show you the platform at the stage we're at. Right there, it's kind of got a digital camo pattern to it. So, the next step is I'm gonna put a, a whole lot lighter, but a lighter coat, but a sponge coat of a light green, of a light OD green. So let me go get that paint shook up and I'll be right back. And my next color is going to be this light, well, you, it's hard to tell for the shadow, it's a light green, light OD green. And guys, most of you probably already know this, but when you're shaking up rattle cans, don't shake it like that. All the heavy stuff's done settled to the bottom. When you shake it up, turn it upside down, let that paint and that thinner mix. You, you won't have to shake it nowhere near as much doing it that way as you will that away so just turn it upside down and give it a shake it, it'll be a whole lot quicker process also too one thing i'd like to one thing i'd like to add is this light green is going to be simulating a uh kind of a moss on the bark and it has a different look it has a different texture i used a piece of natural sponge this ain't the actual one on the stick but a piece of natural sponge uh, it's got a different design than the one I'm going to use for the uh, the light green moss. So, just a, I mean, if you got a different one, just give it a little different texture to it. If not, it's going to just be the same color uh, or the same design. I just want to change it up just a little bit. Just gives it a little better look. Again, we're going to be following this same vertical design. Trying to keep it up and down. you notice I got my sponge cut. A little narrow strip. And I'm gonna take that long strip, put it on there like that. I'm not gonna put quite as heavy a coat with the light green. The light green really ain't a lot different than the gray that's on there, but it just adds a, just a little extra depth to the, the stick itself. And there's no wrong way to do this. Just do it to it pleases your eye. Just kind of go over it lightly. And the more colors you add to it, the more depth you get out of it. Now on this last step, I've got a light coat of green on there, kind of gives it a little moss. Now I like to go in there, I, I put a, a, a gray finish, then I put shadows on it, and then I added my two light colors, the light tan, the light green, and then I like to, like to hit some highlights with the dark green. Just add it, another layer of dark, light, dark. So again, I'm gonna use the same sponge, it's the same tone, just a darker color. It's not gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna use that sponge and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna repeat the process. Go back over the sticks and the platform and I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna put it on the tree. We'll see how it looks. All right, guys, here is a look at it. Got it kind of in a sun and shady spot. See how it breaks up in it. But 
form. Looking down on it. Looking up on it. Alright, this is a better look at it from the sun, from the sun side to the shade side, which is where I typically would like to be at anyway. You can see the, the depth of the paint job gives it that blend in ability. This is an oak tree, it's a white oak. Here's a look at the stick. Of course, the side profile sticking out in the sun. I don't know how you hide it if it's in the sun like that, but I come around here. 